All right, we're good. <laughs> That's what you said the last time. <laughs> What, what were we talking about? We had some good stuff there. Well, we talked about how the, the end of the world is coming, for sure. <laughs> we talked about doing comedy. Let's, yeah. let, let me tackle that a bit with you. All because, right. like I said, I'm the uh, loser doing the comedy podcast in his friend's basement. Right. And you're a trained comedian. Right. But we were saying, I was asking you, that your background wasn't so much in stand-up but in sketch improv. Yeah. What's the difference? Uh, well, with sketch uh, comedy and improv comedy uh, versus stand-up, it's very, very different. Sketch and improv are more of an organic sort of uh, process. Improv, improv comedy is something that's made up in front of an audience um, on the spot, a la Whose Line Is It Anyway or uh, uh, Upright Citizens Brigade style, which is long form. 45 minute to an hour long made up stories like uh, sort of like improvised theater improvised plays so that's what improv is improv is used as a tool to write sketch so Saturday Night Live and all of these different places all of those writers and all of those performers are all improvisers that that moved into the world of sketch and, and, and write down the short two or three minute sketches that you see on SNL or some of my best sketches that I've ever written, I came up with the ending first. So I know how it ends. Um, and then what your job as a writer, and, and maybe the worst part of sketch writing is getting there after. So, you know, it's like uh, it's like a puzzle that way. You know, a lot of people have really good ideas but can't implement them. So it's the writing exercise that kills a lot of people. When you get a group of people sitting around going, hey, yeah, but what if we, let's get up, get up, let's, let's try it this way. And then you get up and try to, you know, try to figure it out uh, up on your feet. That's where improv, improv as a tool really comes in handy. Yeah, as uh, the Second City uh, process, I went to Second City in Toronto. Um, that whole process is all about the process. And so, you know, you bring in headlines from the newspaper. You watch uh, the morning news, you listen to the radio in the morning, and you make notes. You know, Stephen Harper fell off a horse this morning in Calgary on his ranch. So then you go, okay, well, we ne now we need, uh, what, how did that happen? Let's get a sketch. Let's write a piece of sketch comedy around that. It's from the horse's point of view. From the, yeah, so the horses get together. Okay, let's get up. So then we all get up together, and we improvise as horses what that meeting of the minds was in the morning, right? At daybreak, the rooster cock a doodle dude and the pigs came and said, you know, I heard Stephen Harper's coming. So it was the pigs, you know. And you just, you just start to brainstorm and you get up and you play it. You play. Um, you know, in the theater and, and in improv and in sketch, you have to really connect with that sense of play, that sense of anything can happen and you allow it to happen on stage. We had talked a bit about sketch versus... Uh stand-up mm -hmm. and uh, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts by stand-up comics like Mark Marin and Joe Rogan brilliant yeah. uh, and their friends and their extended network and I'm starting to realize that there's more to the mechanics of stand-up yeah. than I had known about yeah yeah and there's also kind of this division these divisions that they see yeah you know the, everyone makes one of the guitar comics and that's the, right uh, the sketch, not sketch comics, the, uh, the toy, characters, toy yeah, yeah, the prop comics, prop comics yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's this hierarchy or supposed hierarchy. There is. Hierarchy. Yeah. Where, how do you describe what you do as stand up? Well, do you have a, a yeah, niche? Well, it's weird because uh, the character that I perform as on stage, a lot of people love the most. His name is Clarence Tutos, and I'm in a full costume and, you know, uh, and that type of thing. But I. And the, that kind of stuff is more planned out? Maybe? Yeah, for sure. I mean, sketch. That's, that's sketch that I've turned into stand-up. So there are bits, predefined bits that I do that are, are more stand-up comedy based, but they're done through a character. And they're also very loose. I mean, uh, it's kind of slacker stand-up is, is 
I guess, how you can define it. I mean, I know what I'm going to say, but I, I definitely, I would, you know, I could walk around this room as the character and sort of do an hour just on this room as the character because I know the character's point of view. I know how he sees the world. I know his politic. I know how he feels about God or not God, you know. So, but I mean, the division in comedy is very real. You know, the, there's a purity to, to language, right, and to words. And that, you know, Today, George Carlin has been dead, you know, for, he's been gone for six years. The world is collapsing, and uh, people are still on Facebook posting George, George Carlin rants because he used language in, in, as poetry almost, and, and so there was a purity to that. So when you get a guy with a, a fucking banana peel on his head, and he, <laughs> you know, a guy like Carrot Top, where, you know, uh, or, yeah, everybody or, bangs on Carrot yeah, Top. Yeah, you know, these guys, you know, it's he, not, it's not, not, it's not not comedy. But there's, they're, they're, you're fooling the, you're fooling the monkeys into, into laughing. We talked about spontaneity and the act, and how accidents happen. Yeah. Uh, how much would you break up your act into a percentage? Like? Well, every comic has about thirty minutes that they love, right? Every comedian has about thirty minutes that they're, it's their A game, it's their A material. But then every comic also understands that there's ten or fifteen minutes in there that. You know, they could, they wouldn't want on their HBO special, <laughs> and then so you have a 45-minute act, which most shows are, because that's what comics get paid to do is about an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, so to fill that hour, a lot of comics will go to the crowd and talk. So where are you from, sir? Is that your lovely wife? How long you've been married? Work. It's it's the same crowd work all the time. No, you are known as a native comedian, and you do a lot of native, quote unquote. Yeah. You know, uh, Venues? Yeah. Do you do non-native venues as well? Yeah, it's essentially if the phone rings, I'll go. At first, I kind of fought the stigma, oh, a native comedian, <laughs> you know, because I didn't want to be that. But I realized more and more there's there's not only value, personal value, because that's who I am, but also cultural value. It's really helping people see past their own shit right and and they get to see or hear something that they can relate to oh an alternate voice right and i and i don't i don't mind that a lot of a lot of mainstream comics that are supposed to be my mentors always told me i'm taking the cheap way out by writing that way and it's like well you know the point of the the, the fact is when i listen to the news i only hear the news one way i don't want to do bingo and bannock there's an element of that but uh, I don't want people laughing at us. I want them to laugh with us. And so, and we are, we're, we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're artists, we're, you know, we're parents. Um, some of us are dating your daughters, white people that hate hey, Indians. You know, this is a family podcast. That's right, that's right. Uh, <laughs> when I listen to these professional comics talking about how they bomb, hmm. eat, totally eat shit on stage. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you really bad? So badly. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. How do you deal with that? You don't. You, you drink. <laughs> 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 you, you, you drink and you go to your hotel room alone and you eat food and, and it's, a, it's a misery that you'll never believe. Have you ever met a really hostile audience? Oh yeah, man. I, I where I did a I did a Christmas party in Winnipeg. Um, this was early. This was I, I was about a year in. They paid me pennies, you know, uh, but it was a full show, and um, it was horrible. I mean, the, the <laughs> audience not only hated Indians, but I mentioned the word Indian, and you could and and the boss who was sitting in the front row crossed his arms and went, "Oh fuck no." Like that. <laughs> He's never hired an Indian. <laughs> he probably is the guy that drives by Main Street and laughs when he sees a drunken Indian. Like it was the most awkward 45, and not a laugh. <laughs> and I said to the guy about 15 minutes in, I said, we can stop this and you can keep your money and I can go home. He said, no, finish. <laughs> and uh, so there's been, there's been a few of those. You know, yeah. That's hostile. That's hostile. That's, that's bad. It's